rather uneventful weekday. Lots of emails, lots of Zoom calls, lots of meetings. But having said that, had a good uh, amount of time on LinkedIn today and uh, came across a couple of interesting articles. So one of the more interesting news of recent time is the Broadcom acquisition of VMware. I used to work for VMware, as some of you may know. So it's a very, very big one in the industry because Broadcom is known to acquire organizations and completely take innovation out of them. And VMware, on the other hand, has been the massive innovator that it is for many, many years. So where does the problem lie? My challenge and my issue with a lot of these people who write articles are essentially the fact that many of them are actually not writing it very factually. A lot of them are actually writing it in their best interest to kind of generate some views or generate some hits on their blog posts or their videos, so to speak. Why do I say it? Some of these guys that actually write these articles or actually even create these videos, when you really, really dive into the content, they're essentially just regurgitating a lot of the points where analysts or anybody's just making very, very general statements and then put them all together in a, in a particular piece, if you like. Uh, but none of them have even remotely stepped foot in a data center, so to speak. And obviously, the whole notion of a massive organization like VMware tanking after so many years of dominance in the data center makes for a good story anyhow. And it's very clickbait-ish, if you like. So today, I kind of want to share with you my personal experience. Obviously, it's my opinion in many ways of what I really, really, really think VMware would be like or rather VMware by Broadcom would look like in the future. I want to stress I no longer work at VMware, although I do have many good friends that still do work at VMware. And this is really an opinion piece and based on my understanding and having been in industry for 20 odd years. First thing is VMware is not going away anytime soon. Why is that the case? So VMware's core product is vSphere, which is the hypervisor. A lot of these folks that start writing about alternatives to VMware, vSphere, which is great. I, I mean, there is a lot of uh, options out there in the market. There is open source options. There's obviously paid options, which is fine, right? Anybody has an option to choose to run an Oracle VM, say for example, in the data center. But a lot of these folks that write articles about it is like they're going way out there. They're putting out names and say, hey, Mr. Customer, you should consider XYZ hypervisor or ABC hypervisor that nobody actually heard of before. These are like totally, you know, open source hypervisors that nobody would recommend running production workloads on. I mean, to be fair, if just in case for those who are not aware, VMware vSphere has been the only paid hypervisor for the last 10 years. And this is well unknown for a lot of people. I mean, obviously people know Hyper-V, people know Nutanix, and a lot of times they bundle it together free with their software, but vSphere remains the only paid hypervisor and for a very good reason for that. There's no way customers are moving out of vSphere anytime soon. But having said that, I'm not saying that there'll be no customers leaving vSphere. There will definitely will be, but I think a lot of customers who still want the kind of reliability, they would actually stay with VMware. So next, there's a lot of talk about the whole consolidated portfolio or simplifying of the portfolio at VMware. When I used to work at VMware, we always complain internally that there are way too many products that we could sell. We had 40 to 50 different products that we could sell and it was just too difficult. And every time we want to sell something, you know, we have got to engage multiple different business units to come together to pitch a solution, so to speak. So this whole simplification of um, portfolio by Broadcom is actually something that I feel a lot of us have wanted it to happen for a long time while we were work working at VMware, but now it's come to fruition. Personally, I think it's a really, really good move by Broadcom. It just simplifies the sell motion. It uh, allows the customer to have a very seamless experience for the entire VMware stack. I don't understand why this is seen as a downside for some of these naysayers, but totally, it. I mean, for me, it's, it's such a no-brainer. And with that, the third point comes, oh, you know what, it's gonna be so much more expensive because they're consolidating so many products in one. 
So this particular point is hilarious in many ways. If you really, really look at tech in general, I don't remember at, at any time, at any point in time, a customer have come to us or and said, hey, you know what? Your solution is very, very affordable. I'll, I'll buy your solution. Every single customer will call out a vendor solution as being expensive. There is no cheap solution. Every solution is too expensive for any customer. And what more a solution like the consolidated portfolio of so many products, do you think it was ever going to get cheaper? To be fair, if it's one and a half times the price of what you would typically pay just for consolidating, I think it's great value to be really fair if you need it. But I, I'm not 100% sure how Broadcom is selling it now. I, if I understand correctly, there's plain vSphere and VCF as a collective. But VCF, I mean, I, I was the big champion of VCF because I, I owned the product previously. And I thought it's it's actually a great product if you, if you bought it as a stack. The next part is actually about partners. So there's this big hoo-ha about, oh, they're completely eliminating all the partners. There were so many partners in the past that contributed so much to the growth of VMware. And now, you know, they have no loyalty and they completely cut them all loose. So let's be realistic. Yes, it was true. A lot of partners did help the growth of VMware. But having said that, over the years, many partners also remain sleeping partners. And I think most of us would agree, as the organization grew, there were only probably you know, for every 100 partners, maybe 10 that were really active. So this whole move to completely eliminate partners and then re-recruit partners who are truly interested in the product seemed like a fair move if you ask me or you rather if you look at it objectively not quite sure why again it's seen as such a bad thing but my view on it is that it's because it's a sensationalized story nobody's really looking at it objectively from a business standpoint but if you really look at it closely it is something that should have happened a long long time ago and the last point that i totally don't get it's the fact that oh you know what innovation is going to stop just because Broadcom bought it and Broadcom has got a history with companies tanking after the acquisition. So let me just rewind a little bit. If you look at all the acquisitions that Broadcom has done in the past, most of them were already going downhill upon acquisition. VMware is a bit of a different one. Part because VMware on its own was actually still doing okay. In fact, it was doing all right. Uh, and Broadcom came by and acquired VMware at its peak. VMware was still the number one hypervisor, number one giant in a data center in terms of infrastructure software. So the quick question is, do you think they will pay billions of bucks to completely strip the company bare and have zero innovation? Just doesn't make any money sense at all. This is not a dying company, neither is it a struggling company. Yes, it could use to, I mean, it, it could be a bit leaner, like what we just mentioned previously, but it is by no means a company that is struggling for success. So personally, I'm actually quite excited to see the next generation of what VMware will look like under Broadcom. And I think everybody should as well. While I've spoken a lot of stuff in defense of VMware, one thing I know that is likely going to change with regards to VMware is actually the culture of VMware prior to the Broadcom acquisition. This is by no means any reflection on Broadcom as an organization, but it's just the nature of acquisitions in general. Every time an acquisition happens, there will be always streamlining, uh, there will always be restructuring and things that happen. So to kind of expect how you were before and after an acquisition feel exactly the same, it's almost never gonna happen. I mean, I must say I had great memories at VMware, made some good friends and great colleagues, but yeah, it's now in the past. It's sad to see another big tech giant go, but that's the way tech is. And personally, I wish everybody at VMware or rather at Broadcom all the best. And like I mentioned earlier, I'm very excited to see what holds in the future for VMware. That's all for me. I hope my opinion was a little bit more useful for those who are trying to understand this whole drama around VMware and Broadcom. And uh, until next time, 